Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial system of equations. We have x to the fourth plus x squared y squared plus y to the fourth equals 91 and x squared minus xy plus y squared equals 7. And we're going to be solving for x and y. Now I'll be presenting at least two methods and let's see how this goes. If you know of any other method, let us know. And if I don't forget, I'll also show you a graph of these two functions, curves, which looks pretty interesting. All right, let's start with the first method. So for my first method, I kind of want to use the symmetric equations. So I want to focus on two things. That's going to be the sum of x and y and the product. Because what we can do here is x squared plus y squared can actually be written as x plus y to the second power minus 2xy. And why is that important? Because we can replace x squared plus y squared with that, along with the minus 2x minus xy, this is going to turn into x plus y quantity squared minus 2xy minus xy, which is minus 3xy equals 7. So if x plus y is equal to s for sum and xy is equal to p for product, then we can write this as s squared minus 3p equals 7, which is a good thing to do, right? Now, how do we use that in the first equation? Well, first of all, we need to realize that we need to take care of this, right? So this can be written as x squared plus y squared squared minus 2x squared y squared. Hopefully you know this expression because otherwise you can start with this, expand it, and you're going to realize that you have an extra term to x squared y squared, which you need to subtract, which will give you x to the fourth plus y to the fourth. So you can also do it in two steps, but I just wanted to show you uh, in one step. Hopefully that's okay. And then, of course, we're not done yet because we still have to take care of this. But guess what? This expression, x squared plus y squared, can also be replaced with this. By the way, uh, we can actually do this. Uh, oops. We can uh, go ahead and erase this maybe uh, and write this as s squared minus 2p. Okay, so this is equal to s squared minus 2p. And then you square that and minus 2, this is xy quantity squared, so it'll be 2p squared. So we were able to write the sum of the fourth powers in terms of s and p, but then we need to do it for x squared, y squared as well, but that's just p squared. So now x to the fourth plus x squared, y squared plus y to the fourth would be s squared minus 2p quantity squared minus 2p squared plus p squared because of this. Now this makes negative p squared, so we get s squared minus 2p quantity squared minus p squared. And where does that come from? From the first equation, which is equal to 91. So we know that this is equal to 91, and this is equal to 7. Okay, so this is equal to 7, and this is equal to 91. So let's go ahead and put those two together, or maybe just copy that. s squared minus 3p is, oops, 3p is equal to 7. Awesome. That's our system of equations. This is a new system uh, of S and P. It's not S and P 500, by the way. We're not talking about stock market here. Uh, anyways, so how do you solve the system, right? Well, the easiest way to me in this case would be to isolate P from here. Uh, and we can do that by adding 3P and then subtracting 7. So in other words, 3P would turn into S squared minus 7. So P would be s squared minus 7 divided by 3. So that's something I can use in the other equation so that we can get a single variable. So s squared is going to stay the same, minus 2p, we're going to replace p with that, and then s squared minus 2p1, but that, that needs to be squared, of course, and then we have to subtract p squared from it, and that'll be 91. Okay, if you can solve this equation, hopefully, then you should get something nice, okay? Because, oops, I forgot to replace P with that. So P will be replaced with uh, S squared minus 7 divided by 3. So I need to square that as well. And then the whole thing is equal to 91. Okay? Now, everything is in terms of S, a single variable. So we should be able to solve it. Hopefully. You never know, right? Because what if this turns out to be quartic? We have to use quartic formula, which you don't want to use. Never, ever. Uh, maybe just use a different method. 
But let's see what happens. Uh, I can make a common denominator, 3s squared minus 2s squared plus 14, if you negate and distribute, divided by 3, and that will be squared. And then this will be squared as well. Maybe we can just, you know, first write it this way and then expand it. This will be s squared. So s squared plus 14. We're going to square that so it's going to look like this. s to the fourth plus 28s squared plus 196 divided by 9 minus s to the fourth minus 14s squared plus 49 divided by 9, which is a good thing because that gives us a common denominator. And guess what? S to the fourth cancels out, leaving us with a quadratic equation. How beautiful is that, right? That's awesome. 28 S squared plus 196 minus plus, because of the double negation, minus 49 divided by 9 equals 91. And now this is 42 S squared. Hopefully something will simplify. 196 minus 49. I can probably add two to both. Uh, 200 minus 53, 147. Is that right? I think so. 147, and then divide by 9. Oh, we can just do 9 times that, cross multiply. 8, 19? No. Uh, 8, okay. 810 plus 9, 819. Okay. I think, did I say that first? Anyway, something like that. Subtract 42s squared equals, okay, I'm not good at subtraction, so I'm going to do it like this. It's going to be a 2, 7, and 6. Okay. I hope 6, 7, 2 is divisible by 42, but I doubt it. Let's go ahead and simplify. Let's divide by 2, 21. S squared divide by 2, 3, 36. Hmm. 3, 36, they're both divisible by 3, so that's a good thing. 1, 12. Oh, come on. Is that going to work? Hmm. Uh, yes. Actually, um, this is 16, right? Yeah. It is 16. Okay, good. S squared equals 16, which means S is 4 or negative 4. So from here, you can proceed. How? Uh, if S is 4, we can find P. If S is 4, 16 minus... By the way, no matter what S is, S squared is always 16. So you can just go off of that. 16 minus 7 uh, is... What is 16 minus 7? 9. Okay. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So this gives us P equals 3. Both cases, right? That's the product. So you're basically looking at this, uh, and let's use t as a variable. Uh, from Vieta's formulas, the sum is 4 and the product is 3. So that gives us the following equation. From here, t becomes 1 and 3. But remember, t represents x and y in this case. You could also use x or y, but t is kind of like more generic. So from here, t can be 1 or 3, which means x can be uh, 1 or 3, or vice versa, like y can be that way too. Uh, with the other equation, our sum is going to be 4t plus 3. And again, this is factorable, but this time t values are going to be negative 1 and negative 3. Now, what does this mean? Let's talk about it, right? So, for example, if x equals 1 is a solution, in other words, right? If you look at the original problem, if x is 1, then you're going to get um, 1 plus y squared plus y to the fourth equals uh, 91 and this will give you 9 y to the fourth plus y squared equals 90. Now can you find the number that satisfies it? Yes, 81 and 9. So that means y squared is 9 which means y is equal to plus minus 3. In other words, if x is 1 then uh, y is plus minus 3 and vice versa. Okay, you get the idea? So that's how it works. You can They can switch around but let me show you the graph which I believe is the most interesting part of this. Ta -da 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 two very interesting curves intersecting at four points. Can you find them? Very easy to find, right? All right. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out A plus BI. And bye-bye.